What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Vampire Masquerade. Our friends are dead and we eat blood. We eat blood and our friends are dead. Something like that. So, actually, this is perfect. This is exactly where we left off last time. Uh, just to kind of review a little bit here. Macy's not in really good shape, but good news is I'm rich. The so Psycho Slasher, Clarissa, Claudia, Nadia, whatever. She sells all her property, put Macy on a plane in England. Which is, you know, once all the screaming was over, I tried to explain as little as possible. Even Macy knows you don't stay in the same country with people who want to put wire in your mouth and mutilate your roommates heading to the airport. This is like a lot. Where are you now? So that's where we finished off in the last episode. Let's see what we got to say now. I'm at the airport drawing. Hello, my name is Simon, and I like to do drawings. <laughs> Look at me. I'm regular old artiste, ain't I? When are you home? I'm going to Seattle first. I gotta make sure I have some friends left alive. Nick and Denise aren't answering their phones. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. Shit. Didn't you have this thing with a niece while they were dating? Plus, isn't Nick's brother like a cop? Yeah, maybe. Do we need cops? Do we need priests? I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm going to send you a picture of somebody and tell me if you know them. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that's... um. No. Are you fucking them? If not, can I? Also, if you are, can I? Wait, do I want to fuck people anymore? So am I a chick? Or am I a guy that just likes to fuck other guys? These are the questions that keep me awake at night. <laughs> I'm so confused about life. <laughs> it sounds like it. Especially in my instance, if I don't know whether or not I'm a guy or a girl, if I like fucking guys while I'm a guy, or if I'm a girl that likes to fuck guys. Wow. Or whatever. Death. <laughs> Are there drugs for this? Yeah, of course. PTP, heroin, crack, cocaine. I've seen them more than one place. Like, just going past the alley behind Ralph's. The people, not drugs. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing in the alley behind Ralph's? feeding <laughs> looking for something to eat there was, uh, there was a black and white stray but I just couldn't have eaten anything mm -mm. I tried to go to the pet store like pigeons are just not enough pigeons and rats I mean but even them I just look at them and they're so dumb and with these sad green eyes and just and just like they were chasing a piece of popcorn on the ground or whatever. Jesus, Izzy. Eat people like me. Kill the bus driver. What am I supposed to do? I was a vegetarian. Am I even supposed to be alive instead of a rat? Speaking of which, I'm so fixated on getting through the woman's cash and getting night, the night flights hooked up. I didn't really think about it, but when I saw a Marine crossing himself before unwrapping a McTuna, and I realized I should eat. Then I saw a marine crossing himself before unwrapping. I don't know. Not sure what the hell that's supposed to mean, but sure. I'm by that Mexican place they seem to have at every airport. Cantina Loco or something. They actually have, like, shapes of two black steel coffins on either side of the door. With, like, colored lights all over them. Like, hey, corpse party at the airport. <laughs> Living the Murta Loca. Dios me cuide el I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Don't even know what the fuck that means. Uh, what's the menu look like? There's a massive, huge, scary TSA who basically dislocated this woman's knee and knocked her over trying to search her wheelchair. Woman's, woman's like, I have EDS. You dislocated my knee and the TSA just does not give a fuck. There's a man who won't stop talking about golf. Yeah, but what about the menu? <laughs> Wait a minute. So is he playing golf or is he talking about it? 
I can't kill a man for just liking golf, even when nobody's listening, but reading between, he does strike me as somebody who will turn out to be a real asshole about everything as soon as they switch it to CNN. <laughs> Also worth noting, but not on the menu, are a very large number of small children who I am sure are on my flight and some rich kid field trip matching clothes. They look like they all look like talking mushrooms. <laughs> Somebody might notice pretty quick if you kill a TSA agent. You know though putting your mouth on people you hate? How do you? Yeah, that's cool. It's like fucking improving the world. <laughs> but seriously, I'm worried about you. What are you going to do? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I have one idea. What is it? Well, Freaky Cannibal is guest DJing at the palace next week, so... Such a groupie. <laughs> is she going to eat Frankie DJ? <laughs> yeah, and I'm proud and I'm good at it. You're going to a vamp you're going to vampire Frankie Cannibal. <laughs> Thinking about it. Well, one less singing Hollywood sellout is fine by me. <laughs> Hate. <laughs> Err. <laughs> you're just jealous. Do you think the police might notice Frankie Cannibal multi platinum musician and star star of stage and screen went missing? I don't know, maybe I'll turn Frankie into a vampire. Or can you not just or can you not just drink to do that? I've got like do what Hollis did to us. Oh you've got to do like what Hollis did to us. Okay. You gotcha gotcha gotcha. Okay. So get us blackout drunk and ruin our lives? <laughs> I feel like if that could turn you into a vampire, Frankie's been a vampire since the third album. <laughs> Shake my head. Frankie's hot. Whatever. I gotta get lunch. <laughs> so what am I gonna get for lunch? Oh fuck. Um Beneath the painted steel struts and glass. Murder. Murderer. On the ground and completely fucked. Who is? What happened? I went after uh the golf drunk. The bathroom stall looks like someone just shot a season of the Nick in there. Anyway, the first thing I noticed is that the children are all boarding like preferred platinum spark sapphire status customers getting home before everyone else. I get on it. And that's weird, but I don't think much of it. And I'm business class. But why wouldn't with all the money in the but why wouldn't I with all the money in the world? I don't know. Turns out the only other people in business class are white children and their even whiter teacher with black glasses putting all these SpongeBob packs on the bins like okay, Tolliver, thank you. I'm glad you caught the Geo dude. What do we say to the stewardess? All wearing pink and yellow. I think, like, it's a visibility thing they do in Japan, like they told everybody to wear the same colors. <laughs> Delta, air conditioning. It gets to be that time when they just want us to be cold and sleep. Just the dark and the engines breathing. One seat from the bulkhead and not at all asleep. I have lunches, tasty, tasty blood running through me, staring at a fastened seatbelt while fasten seatbelt while seated and then I saw a pinkish hand and then hard rubber on my ear I don't know what the hell that means this kid behind has climbed over the seat stepped on my head another diving with his front arms first over the before one next to me with a crust on her nose a yellow balloon beads in her hair she's awake and grinning on like not at all a child uh oh that armored chick I don't know what the hell that is a plain seatbelt split otherwise eerily quiet they're all congealing 
in through a cabin tumbling crawling on carpet thin blonde and brown hair standing up at angles chocolate smeared mouth little fingers spit wet sticky with juice or whatever smells like medicine on linen chew toys they were piling on and pulling at me I can't stand up under the weight of these gross kids sandwiching between plastic and stripped upholstery. Cover of an in-flight magazine's paper cutting me and wants me to indulge in my inner eye in Ojai. I think he's going to eat the kid. I get violent. It's just a nightmare I tell myself. Uh-oh. It has to be me thinking about mom and this weirdness turning it into the swarming hungry brats. That didn't work. There's no pain like that in dreams. I couldn't scream, so I just watched. I'm dead. Yep. The teacher is rolling me off the plane in the wheelchair now. I don't know where they're taking me. I'm so sorry, Izzy. They needed that part of me. They were so bloody hungry. I'm almost dry inside. So brutal, they have most of my legs inside their bellies. Holy fuck, the kids ate me. They look so fat and happy. I'm kind of proud. Tolliver is holding my hand with hard fingers and is looking at me with old eyes. Goodbye, Izzy. <laughs> fuck no, where are you? I'm coming to get you, Case. Don't be dead, Case. Case. Fuck me. Yeah, we're going to try again. All right, the kid behind us climbed over or something, something not like a child. Seatbelts pulling at me. I can't stand up under the weight. I'm going to claw myself out to the aisle. Something round gnawing going moist and flaccid into the weight of my elbow. Silent, dead, milk tooth, primate still attached to my legs. I wanted to scream, but I've forgotten to take in any air. I lock myself in a bathroom. Mm, I don't know. That seems weird. Let's go to coach. I had to coach. All the seats are taken, so I just stand there and breathe for a while. Kids pretend to sleep in business class for a second. I think I made it. Then a big steward shows me back to my seat. I try to argue, scream, but the only weak noises come out of me as a blonde kid with pink turtles glasses <laughs> stares at me and hisses. This time they are prepared. Ah, oh, fuck. We're dead. Teacher is rolling me off the plane in the wheelchair. I'm sorry, Izzy. Run. Goodbye. I'm coming to get you. No, you're not. Case. All right, so we're going to lock ourselves in the bathroom. I thought that would have been the worst choice to do because then you're confined in a stupid little bathroom. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll climb myself out into the aisle. Right, forgot to take in air. I lock myself in the bathroom. I go up over the seat, scraping call buttons and hissing ventilation to tip down into another room. Entertainment system goes off, mixing my scramble for the bathroom with the tire rubber texture of a Pixar movie. I'll never get to see. Alone in the bathroom, I know these texts won't come through until we've landed. I think I'll be gone by then. They're in line outside crying about how they have to pee. Weak padding hands getting louder. The door is. The teacher is rolling me. What the fuck? So I get violent. Is that what I'm going to do? Rip these fucking kids to shreds. I. That's how we do, man. I'm a vampire now. I don't give no rass ass about some little piddly ass kids. Fuck your kids. Fuck your face. Fuck everybody on this plane. We're going down. Yeah, yeah. I get violent. One one die quarter is in a line on the shirt. I have to crush his skull. It ruptures like a gasoline can, leaking red. I try to slide over children against call buttons. Um, no, say anything. The teacher is asleep on the other side of the aisle. I'm tumbling into. So I fall past the curtains into coach in total silence. Nothing. Only sleeping pass only sleepy passengers. A student's from the far end. Do I need assistance? Yes. I feel a little dizzy, ma'am. Not right and disoriented. Uh could you help me to my seat? It takes me to uh takes the curtain back. No bubbling sift of little bodies, just sweetheart strapped between the armrests, shoes dangling, sleep sleepy lolling. 
some with their mouths open like holes punched in peas. She puts me in my place, just seats from the teacher. Old stewardess straps herself again in the facing wall, the way they do. The pilot voice crackles in. The pilot tells us we are beginning our final descent. The teacher's eyes open, saying, let me say, I'm sure... I'm sure he had for a split second in his eyes the look I saw before in the medium. That ink and milk look. Then he turns with me to look at the stewardess strapped up against the wall. She smiles at us like we're first class passengers because we are. The way adults surrounded by children smile at one another. I think they don't want people to see them is the thing. Or they can hide things but only so much. Or maybe I'm just hallucinating now. I think you're hallucinating dude. Well, that explains this. She did a picture of me popping that kid's head. What the fuck? Uh-oh. Who dis? Index right now, but back in time for Bliskis to get at Pickle Factory. Uh, is that Nick? Sorry, with the niece's parents in Index, Washington. It's beautiful and boring. The reception sucks. Okay, the rest. Comedian friend venue equals pickle factory. Google it. Anyway, you can totally stay with us, of course. See you tomorrow. Sweet. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're in Washington. Where, you know, I'm in a terminal near the fake Irish pub being watched very closely by a teacher who is at a TGI Fridays with all the kids who had to get here before sunrise without being chased down like an animal. I want to get out of here, but I think that they will follow me. I don't know what to do. And we're going to have to make a choice now. One of the kids is walking toward me. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> told the guy to drive as fast as he could away, and he was like, I don't, and then I told him $500, there are lights following us, and I'm running out of batteries. Mom, so complex, just lay your head down. Shut up, Mom. Uh-oh. I'm away. Just right in mismatched old houses. There are trees enough, wait, there are trees enough to screen someone following me if I'm stupid. Massive old church. Yeah, now that you have me thinking, I'm like Hollywood. Has a lot of sketch alleys and low windows and people who look crazy and say things that are crazy. We need to learn how to use the world how they use the world. Not, not used to never seeing any of this in the daytime ever again. I see daytime stuff on TV and it feels like a country I used to live in. It'll always be like this. Well, I'm alive and watching terrible comedy in a bar with folding chairs. Okay, now uh, I have a Frankie Cannibals trying, or uh, Frankie Cannibals thing trying to look hot and pretending to drink beer. The more things change. I know, right? I saw something again. Uh oh, is that going to be the alleyway where I'm feeding in? I wish I knew what to do with that. Is that really what my hair looks like? Uh oh. Kinda. I just drew what you looked like in my dream. God, we're pathetic at this. It's kind of weird. He's talking about that there. I'm at the bar. There are so many white people here. Stoner was selling wood, wooden phone cases outside playing actual Huey Lewis. Lewis in the news between sets. Uh huh. What happens to Seattle? Fuck Seattle. Fuck Seattle. Fuck Seattle. Message received from unknown. Oh wait, mommy's got it. I am sickened by the way you are smeared yourself across what you could have what could have been a life. Fuck off, mom. Your friends are here. Your friends here are not your friends anymore. Who is this? Uh-oh. You're asking the wrong questions. You should have run. Too late now. Play along. You should meet Carl. He's so funny. We told him about you and he really wants to meet you. Where are you at, Case? Uh... Yeah. 
uh, wait. Oh, what the fuck? I was thinking, okay, maybe if I do that, just to kind of skip out a little bit. Why are you, uh, why are you lying to me? I'm looking right at you. Alright, so we got this. Yeah, who is this? Okay, wait. That was weird. You should meet Carl. Uh, where are you at, Case? There. Happy now? Oh, wait, I see you. Uh-oh. Okay, Izzy, what do you got? I'm lying in the biggest bed in history and I just fucked Frankie Cannibal. <laughs> I'm lying in an alley behind Aries bail bonds and Nick and Anise just tried to kill me. In the rain. <laughs> no, no, I feel like an asshole. Well, I'm disgusted and jealous. I think my spine might be broken. I fell four floors and can hear them coming. I tried to jump off a rooftop and fell. Was it good? <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I'm proud of myself, but mostly I just, it made me hungry and I was looking right in the middle of it and Frankie's neck, but then it just felt like, no. I mean, it's the actual Frankie cannibal looking all precious on the pillow and shit. I can't do it. Cool story, Izzy. So I'm going to die in an alley, probably. <laughs> Hair still looks better than a drawing, though. <laughs> Wait, I have an idea. Don't move. Don't move. Okay, wait. I can hear you breathing even through the rain. Uh, you can't hide. We are coming. I have to move. Whatever it is, hurry up. You're not coming out. He's so perceptive. You should have come to meet Carl. He's really funny. The next survey. Your death will be slow. Stop exhausting yourself. Case, are you okay? I knew as soon as I saw them, the way they stood, they didn't even notice the rain on their faces. It didn't change right when I told them Elia was dead. I ran so far before I fell off the roof in that alley. And these came down just after I texted you and... I said, I'll come see your friend Carl. I used a crowbar. I crept behind a pile of boxes. I tore around the corner trying to lose her. I'm going to see if I can get them to say I'm going to come see their friend. Nope. But that's just useless. They've got me. I'm in a basement somewhere. Remember that time we stole the bowling shoes? We ran and ran. You always did suck at escapes. We are legion, so they are part of something else now. Oh man, what the fuck? Alright, you know what? I think this is where we're going to call the episode, and we're going to have to try this in the next one. I hope you guys are still enjoying this. I'm really having a fun time with the story. I know it's a really different twist on what I normally do in here. I hope some of you guys are enjoying it. If you are, make sure you hit that like button for me. Check out my new Discord link in the description down below. The link to my new website, chills504.ca. And make sure you subscribe to the channel too. You get to see at least three videos every single day. Take care. Very simple.